Bill Smith is the composer and clarinetist we're talking about. I'm David Garland. This is Spinning on Air, and I'm with Mike McGinnis, who, as he implied, has assembled a whole band here in the studio to perform Bill Smith's Concerto for Clarinet and Combo, and then a companion piece that Mike composed for the same instrumentation, Road Trip. So we're going to hear a music that spans a, a good 50-year period and yet it's full of color and, and vivacity, and it's going to be uh, quite a thrill to have it all assembled here in the WNYC studio. Well, I think one thing that drew me to Bill Smith, and I would also put him in a category with similar people like Jimmy Jufri and Steve Lacey, and actually a lot of clarinetists. There's a tra tradition of clarinetists playing in a lot of different worlds of music. I was first aware of him by seeing it Dave Brubeck performance, I think with the Boston Pops, the live in the Pops PBS show. And I remember not knowing a lot about the history and expecting to hear Paul Desmond. I was very young and I saw this older guy with a white beard that kind of looked like Santa Claus. And he played very sweet, very lyrical, very melodic. I would say that he's most known for working with Dave Brubeck. Even before the Dave Brubeck Quartet, he was part of these group of jazz players who also wanted to write music with longer forms from the, the traditionally classical realm. They were all studying with Darius Mio in Mills College in the 50s. recording with Shelley Mann, recording with Ray Norval. He's not only a great improviser, a great composer in the jazz idiom, but he's also a pioneer in the extended techniques for the clarinet. He cataloged all the multiphonics. He's equally known by the name William O. Smith as a, quote, classical music, new music composer. So that, I guess, the diversity, uh, the flexibility, the multifacetedness of his approach, and where, regardless of what style he's playing, it's still Bill Smith. It's still his music. So you've just played Bill Smith's Concerto for Clarinet and Combo here in the studio. How did it feel? It felt great to me. How did it feel to you? Yeah, it's kind of like getting to take your favorite roller coaster ride uh -huh. <laughs> when playing it, because he, he does put you through all these little twists and turns that you kind of have to improvise around. You really have to stay on your toes, but it's it's just really, really fun. What was interesting about this piece when I finally got the score is I, I, I had heard the recording a number of times, and then when I looked at the clarinet part, it's all chord changes. And I had a chance, um, I went out to Seattle to meet Bill and to take some lessons with him. I got to sit there with him playing the piano with the piece and going through and, and actually explaining a lot of things that aren't in the score. something with swing. So this was kind of my, inspired by the Bill Smith thing, I thought, well, what if I tried to write the whole thing using the swing rhythm, but with my, all the new stuff that I had kind of discovered. Like, I had this first chords, uh, which is the... I 
I put in a lot of different lines and uh, worked a lot with kind of modeling after what, what Bill had done, which he does so, what's so amazing about his concerto is that he's using all of these classical techniques, you know, taking themes and inverting them, going upside down, putting them against each other, the whole thing fits together in this amazing way, analytically, which you might think would make it boring, but you don't even notice that. It's like this subliminal thing that's going on. I would like them to, first of all, find the music not boring, not cliched, not obvious, that it takes them to a place that they don't necessarily expect, to be surprised, and have something that is still it's still using like I, I when I wrote this piece it was cracking me up actually because it was just coming out as being so melodic and harmonic and just some parts that I thought wow I just want to write really pretty harmonies that feel good to me and it seemed a little strange because a lot of the things I play in are very abstract and sometimes kind of atonal but that's what I was feeling in my life to write and I said alright well I'm just gonna be if I'm gonna do this I'm gonna be unabashedly melodic and and write harmonies that I like and swing. And so in like in the second movement, we do a shout chorus that was like could be, I guess, inspired by the feel, the feeling that I get when I listen to Count Basie. I didn't write it to sound like Count Basie, but I thought I want this to feel as good as I feel when I'm listening to Shiny Saki. I, I try to think of the audience, um, one of the things that I like Braxton says a lot is he calls the audience member the friendly experiencer. So I was trying to think, if I'm in the audience, what's going to be interesting to me? What's not going to be boring? And so I try to change it up a lot. I try to, um, one of the things that happens in the last movement, I like to push players that I know and love in different directions. And so Vinny Sparazzo, the drummer, who is so capable of hearing something once and then nailing all the hits, I didn't want him to be able to do that. So I wrote this thing that I lovingly called the drumstickle course, which is like the obstacle course for drummers, where I just put these hits in that I imagine him just kind of like walking through something and getting pummeled with these things and then having to go around it. And I didn't give him the hits, so in his part he doesn't have the hits that he's supposed to play over because I wanted to hear, I didn't want to hear this beautifully, you know, perfect, I wanted to hear him miss and see if I could throw him off. And so that's kind of one thing that I, I want the audience to have, to hear this piece that in some moments it's, it draws them in because it's, it's really melodic, but that it's going to go to, it doesn't seem boring or cliché and, and obvious.